Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Bethany Presbyterian Church. It's good to see a lot of people here gathered and um, good time to always center ourselves on our faith, especially as um, there's always a lot of chaos in the world. So welcome to this place. A warm welcome to uh, friends and family from near and far who are worshiping via Facebook. We're glad that you're with us. Um, the first word I want to just share as we get into a bunch of announcements is a thank you to Jim Guida and Natalia, Kathy Sapinor, Kathy Frank, so many people who keep things running. Last week's service was so awesome. And I think about this church is that we know we're pretty small, but I think that you're all quite gifted. I think of all the many ways that people are passionate, that they share their gifts and do pretty remarkable things. So that's wonderful to know that we have um, a lot of people. Yes, a round of applause for everybody. Thank you. So let's get into some more announcements. Um, first things, and we're, we're gonna just say that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We, Lent is upon us, so it's gonna be a busy month. But we're beginning things this very day with our annual meeting. You might remember that we actually just met in September, but we're trying to return to our normal schedule. Um, we had, I think it was either one or two years due to the pandemic, we didn't have an annual meeting. So we're gonna do that. Everyone is invited to go over to the social hall because that's what we just thought it's a little more informal and we're returning to coffee hour, which is great. <laughs> so there are snacks, as Arnold Schwarzenegger has said here, told you I'll be back. So we've got happy hour. Um, just regarding uh, our COVID protocols, we follow the state guidelines, the county guidelines, the CDC, and you don't need to mask. Um, if you're comfortable and want to keep doing that, please do that. We don't need to sign in for contact tracing. What we've decided is that if we hear of someone, if there's an exposure, we will email everyone and say, we think from this Thursday to Saturday, someone was here, so we'll let you know. But um, thank you to Session. We every, every time Session meets, we talk about COVID and what's the best way forward. So we appreciate your grace. Um, I actually will be, I will be in the office tomorrow, but just to know that um, Mar Maria is on vacation and that's wonderful. So she'll be back on Thursday, so. Um, March 4th, World Day of Prayer. Um, we know that things are going on in, the Ukra in Ukraine, um, so it's a good time to come together and pray. I think this is via Zoom, Kathy, Presbytery. So there's details at, at our webpage at BethPrez.com. Even on, this isn't an announcement that's posted on a picture, but on March 5th, I think at 9 a.m. there's a Zoom with Maggie Harmon of the Presbyterian Foundation talking about um, a lot of churches that are kind of in our place where we have a lot of space looking into how do we rent it, maybe we need to sell space. So she's gonna offer some help with that. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. And so um, for folks at home, be sure to have some bread and juice available. And that also means that we'll be collecting our dry goods and canvas for SSIP, so that's a reminder. This Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, um, I was invited to participate with a few of our SSIP churches. So it is a pre-recorded service, but there will be a Zoom link. Um, and this is Reverend Bobby Jones, he'll be offering the words. Another kind of, I guess you'd say COVID adaptation is if you have a little water or ashes on hand at home, we're not going to be together for, to, to make the sign of the ashes, but we'll guide you through that uh, at home. We have um, very busy Mondays for Lent, and we're looking forward to this, is that we have, I think, 15 copies of this book, Meeting God and Paul. It's a very thin little book, um, and we're going to study it for five weeks. So each Monday in Lent, um, starting not this Monday, but the following Monday, uh, we'll meet at 10 o'clock. We'll just chat about the book, and then at 11 o'clock, we'll come in here, we'll have a little bit of worship together, and then probably by 11.20, 11.30, we will have a simple soup and bread meal. So everyone's invited, we'll probably finish by about 12. So if you have time on Mondays between 10 and 12, you are invited. 
Full plates, full hearts. Um, this is SSIP's biggest fundraiser. Last year, I think they made about $40,000. Um, it's done via Zoom again, and I have the honor of being the, the host of it. So that's kind of fun, but that's via Zoom. There's a lot of items to bid on. Some folks have even made donations here, so it's a fun, quick event. Um, you can go to the website, and then that can lead you to a link to see the various items that you can bid on. So we hope you will attend. Um, so those are our announcements. Um, let's join together in our call to worship. We come those who seek to trust in God. We commit ourselves to do as Jesus would do for those around us. We come delighting in all the wonders God provides us. We would not worry, but open ourselves to God's heart. We come waiting patiently for God to speak. We will be still. Let's join together in our opening hymn, Come Great God of All the Ages.
should let folks know that um, you're invited to stand for the hymns, but also if you're not comfortable, you can remain seated. So feel comfortable either way. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for gathering us once again here at Bethany Presbyterian Church. We think of all that happens each week, the good, the bad, the time certainly flies by, but some weeks are full of a lot of stress and concern. We especially think that war has broken out in Ukraine. And there are many nations in this world that are struggling with human-made and uh, natural disasters. So we remember that we are to gather as your people, as we are spiritual beings, that we would breathe in the breath of life, that we would hear an encouraging word, that we would feel empowered and hopeful to go out into this world as lights of your love. So be with us now in this time and place May we know that we are forgiven when we sin, that we are your beloved children in this world and in the next. And let us always trust that we are held in the palm of your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I now invite us to share in Christ's peace together, um, to take a look around and give someone the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. For our friends at home, maybe say peace via the wall, the Facebook wall. Peace. both an Old Testament passage and a New Testament passage today. You know that throughout uh, February, I was in the Old Testament, we talked about Jacob and Esau and Moses. We're picking up with Moses and Aaron there in the wilderness after the people have fled from Egypt. Um, and you'll probably remember this is about manna in the wilderness. So this is Exodus 16, 1 through 7. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elim, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. And that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. And from Paul's letter to the Philippians, this is the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. 
For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I long for all of you and the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Friends, let us pray. God, we thank you for our journey of faith. We think of all of the many ancestors, those um, we know from our own families, as well as all those who go all the way back to the very beginning, these ancient stories of your people. We thank you for the gift of your word, the way that it helps us and restores us along the journey. So as always, may your spirit move in this time and place so that we may hear a word of hope this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. In the spring of 1999, I was finishing my senior year of college, and I was having a blast with my dear friends as we know that we'd soon be spit out into the real world. I applied to become a young adult volunteer, 
with the PC USA after graduation. We attended a discernment weekend to see where we'd be placed at one of the various sites around the world, but I must admit I had my heart set on going to Ghana. However, no one else wanted to go to Ghana. It was known to be an intense experience, and most folks were turned off by the two pretty unfriendly priests who were the site coordinators there. The policy of the Young Adult Volunteer Program is that no one serves alone. They wanted you to process your experience with other young people. But my heart would not be moved. I lobbied to break the rules and go alone. And after much pushing, I finally convinced the higher-ups to let me go to Ghana. Well, let's just say that my, stubborn, my stubbornness and arrogance came back to bite me in a major way. I found out that Ghana was very different than the experience I had already had in Namibia. Ghana is much less developed. The priests were as unfriendly as they were unhelpful. I was stranded in a far-off village in a foreign land with no comforts, even running water, and no support. How I regretted my decision. I wanted to go home. I fell into a bit of a depression and I struggled to get out of bed. Facing each hot, humid day complete with strange languages, strange customs, strange foods, was probably the biggest challenge of my life. I bet that everyone gathered here may have a story or two about entering into a new endeavor that they regretted. This is certainly exactly how the Israelites felt after spending two months in the wilderness of the Sinai Desert. We know about their dramatic departure from Egypt through the Red Sea, but their elation didn't last long. They were miserable lost and starving. They complained to Moses and Aaron, and they even regretted leaving their life of slavery. That's quite a commentary on our capacity for change, isn't it? <laughs> to choose slavery over the great unknown in the wilderness. Most of us spend our lives trying to avoid the wilderness at all costs, myself included. We want predictability and comfort because we're human. But life always finds a way to get us into the wilderness. Perhaps we feel lost at the death of a loved one or at the termination of a job. Maybe the crumbling of an important relationship or a big change leaves us without a sense of purpose or grounding. Maybe all the pain and conflict of this world calls us to question, what's it all about? We can feel lost in the wilderness as individuals and as communities, even nations. We know the painful divisions in our country. These many institutions that are going through these seismic shifts and the chaos of the pandemic all contribute to making it feel as though our country is deep in the wilderness with few signs of finding our way out anytime soon. Indeed, most of our churches have been in the wilderness for quite a while. Long gone are the comfortable good old days of full pews and a busy Sunday school. We have few resources, less people, less energy, less money. We miss the vibrancy of the past and we're concerned about our future. Where will we be in a couple years? Being in the wilderness is foreboding and frightening. We can manage hunger pains, intemperate weather, sore bodies, and a lot of anxiety. Often the best thing we can do is simply put one foot in front of the other. Thankfully, today's text reminds us that God is still present, even in these wilderness times. And not only that, God still meets our needs. God brought down upon the land each night this bread, and the Israelites went out and collected it each day. It was called manna. 
And sure enough, and sure enough the Israelites eventually did make it to the promised land. As I was alone and hurting in Ghana, my linguistics professor, Salifu, took me under his wing. He was a remarkable man, kind and funny, even spoke 13 languages. On a few weekends when I came out of the village to the, out of the village to the town, Salifu invited me to his home for dinner with his wife and newborn baby. We talk about so many things, we laugh, and I later return to the village feeling renewed for another week. It was a simple act of hospitality, but it meant so much to me. My problems weren't necessarily solved, yet I was given a type of sustenance for my soul that gave me the strength to keep going. Each of us experience our own forms of manna, perhaps in the form of a friend, a phone call, a good book, a piece of art. But these types of manna all come by God at just the right time. It must also be admitted that often the most fruitful growth comes through challenging wilderness times. Under new circumstances and foreign surroundings, our perspectives are shaken up and we're forced to look at things in new ways. Without all of our comforts and, and familiar surroundings, we probably have fewer distractions and are able to focus better. We may even hear the voice of God or experience God's presence. Paul certainly feels this way. In fact, this letter to the Philippians, Paul is writing from prison. And yet we see his strong faith and optimism in the midst of these substantial challenges. He writes to his fellow Christian sisters and brothers with joy and prayers. And despite his own struggles and the trials of the larger church, Paul declares, I'm confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, God isn't going to take us this far and just abandon us. Have faith. God has plans for us, and God's good work in us will find its completion in a variety of creative, beautiful, and sometimes unforeseen ways. As they say, it's all good. In closing, I eventually adapted to life in rural Ghana. I was able to learn some of the local language, and I made some special relationships there. I've been back to visit twice. Most importantly, my time in Ghana strengthened my faith and gave me passion for refugees and immigrants making their own way in our own country. And who would have ever thought that it was my time in Ghana that would lead me to seminary? And here I stand before you, a pastor. Paul reminds us of the faithfulness of God in all circumstances. In the midst of the wilderness, of change, of our own daily struggles, the bottom line of our existence is that we belong to God, and God will not abandon us. So may we look then to the future with hope and with faith, rather than fear and anxiety. Trusting that the one who brought us thus far still has many special plans ahead for us. May it be so. Amen. Amen. And let's join in our next hymn together. Great is thy faithfulness.
moving into the part of our service where we can pray together as a church family. And we know that um, a lot happens each week and a lot happens in the world. And so let's come together and share any joys or concerns you may have and then we'll pray. Yeah. yeah. Amen. So with with Ukraine, we um, there's been quite a bit of coverage, but we know that um, Kiev has been under siege. The people, some people are staying to fight. Others have fled into Poland. It's been interesting to see these massive protests in Russia where they don't want war either. And we know that the Russian and Ukrainian communities of Sacramento um, are coming out saying we don't want war. So in this time, it's easy to kind of um, paint pictures of different nations, what we remember. It's usually the top people who are benefiting from war, those uh, the warmongering folks, and that's what we hope that they would have a change of heart. And we, we are definitely praying for good leadership, for cool heads to prevail and to get us out of this. All right, well, let us join together in prayer. Everlasting God, today we give great thanks for your world, for the snows in the Sierras, for new buds on trees, even bitter cold temperatures that are soon warmed by the sun. All of these gifts are from you, promises of your love, and we are indeed blessed. We so thank you for our faith, for hope that sustains us, for loved ones to share our lives with, for times when we are immersed in the many delights of this good earth. Hear our gratitude for the wonder of creation and the abundance of life. Compassionate God, often we fail to live up to being co-creators with you. Our home is so wonderfully constructed that it has the capacity to meet the needs of all flora and fauna and peoples but we too often allow greed and tribalism to rule our lives. Even now we are deeply concerned about what is happening in Ukraine and in all nations experiencing instability and violence. The ways of war and domination are not your ways. And please, please may we lay down our arms, protect the dignity of all people and lead all of your people of good conscience to creative solutions to our struggles. As your church, may we remember that we are connected all around the earth through the love of Jesus Christ. Be with those seeking to share a message, an alternative to corrupt governments and vengeful societies. May we strive to show loving support as we all seek the true gift of community. Help us learn the needs of the earth when we hear it groaning. Help us care for sisters and brothers in other lands so that they may fully live. Let us learn from them so that we may also fully live. And not just all under the path of deep listening, cooperation, and sustainability. Healing and tender God be with us in pain and suffering, in loss and in grief. We think of those overseas facing strife and natural disasters, even as remember, we remember those closer to us who are facing their own burdens. Be near and remind them of your lasting presence. We pray for all those we've mentioned this day. And in silence now we offer prayers of our hearts, knowing you are always there to listen, even when we may not have the words. Let us pray now the words that Jesus taught us together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of Amen. We now think of the gifts of this community 
There's so many things that we share with one another, especially our time, our talent, and our treasure. So it's in that spirit that we will receive the morning's offering. We have a plate here, a plate here, um, and we do appreciate these gifts, and we trust that they will be blessed and go on and do much in the world. Let's stand and sing the doxology.